A tank with an internal volume of 1 cubic meter contains 20 kilograms of carbon dioxide held at 30 bar. What is the temperature of the carbon dioxide? This problem requires us to use the ideal gas law. So start by searching for the term ideal gas in the FE reference handbook, and you'll be reminded of this popular formula. PV equals MRT, where P is the pressure, V is the volume, M is the mass, R is the specific gas constant, and T is the temperature. Now you may also remember from back in chemistry, and I'm sure this is in the reference handbook as well, this equation, PV equals NRT. So what's the difference between these two? Well, the difference is that in the first one, we're given M, which is mass in kilograms, and in the second one, we're given N, which is the number of moles. And we have to use, instead of the specific gas constant, we have to use the universal gas constant, R bar, if we're given the number of moles. So R bar is always the same number. It's the universal gas constant. If we're not going to do that, if we're not going to have the number of moles and we're going to use the mass, then we have to find the specific gas constant. So that means that this is a number that's unique to carbon dioxide, and if it was any other gas, it would be a different number. So there's a couple of ways forward here. We could convert that mass to the number of moles and use this equation. But in this case, since we're given the mass, I'm going to find the specific gas constant. I think either way would be valid, but uh, I think this is quicker and easier because we can look up the specific gas constant for CO2. And the way to do that is using the search term thermal and physical property tables. And in that table, you'll see an entry for carbon dioxide and we can directly obtain this value. Our CO2 is 0 0.1889 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And make sure you're doing this on your own and not just taking my word for it as you're watching these videos. That's a general comment for this entire process. Now there is another way to come about this specific gas constant, which I want you to be aware of. You can use the universal gas constant and the molecular weight of that gas. So formulaically, we would say that R for CO2, the specific gas constant, is the universal gas constant, R bar, divided by the molecular weight of CO2. So now what is the molecular weight of CO2? Well, for that, if you don't remember what the atomic weights are of carbon and oxygen, if it's been a while since chemistry, you can use the periodic table. So search periodic table in the FE reference handbook, and you'll recall that carbon is 12 and oxygen is 16, and there's two oxygens, so that's going to be 12 plus 32 is 44. And then the universal gas constant is also listed, so you can use that search term. So the universal gas constant is 8.314, and that has units of kilojoules per kilomole Kelvin. And then the molecular weight of CO2 is 44. And normally we talk about molecular weights in grams per mole, but we can equally call them kilograms per kilomole, right? That's just multiplying numerator and denominator by 1,000. So let's do that. So the units will cancel out a little better. Kilograms per kilomole. And then we'll cancel kilomoles, and we end up with the same number, which of course we should. 0 0.1889 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin same as we found in the lookup table. So you're going to use the lookup table whenever possible because it's faster, but I want you to know how to do this as well. So now that we have R, we know the pressure, we know the volume, we know the mass, and we know the specific gas constant for CO2. We're ready to find the temperature. Let's algebraically isolate T, and we'll get PV over MR and we're ready to make our substitutions. Now the pressure is a bit interesting because we have it in bar. What in the world is a bar? Well, you don't have to memorize this. You can look this up in the units and conversion factors in the FE reference handbook, but I think it's useful to kind of know what some of these different units are. So if you are open to memorizing a few things along the way and helping things go a bit faster, which uh, may just happen naturally as a result of repetition, then let's start by just remembering what an atmosphere is. An atmosphere, if measured in pascals, is 101 325, 101,325 pascals. Or if you want that in kPa, just divide by 1,000, 101,325 kPa. A bar is very similar to an atmosphere. It's a bit smaller. So instead of 101, 325, it's just 100,000. So it's just a touch less than an atmosphere. And of course, you can just divide that by 1,000 as well. So it's 100 kPa. And what is a pascal? A pascal is a measure of pressure that's equal to one newton per meter squared. So that's really good to know as you're navigating your way through different units. Um, having that substitution at the ready is going to be extremely helpful. So let's convert bar to newton per meter squared. If there's 30 bar, for every bar, there's 100,000 newton per meter squared per bar. The volume is one meter cubed. 
And in the denominator, we have the mass, which is 20 kilograms, and the specific gas constant, which is 0.1889. And that has units of kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Now we've got to check the units here and make sure everything works out. We'll cancel bar, we'll cancel kilograms, and now we have Newton over meter squared times meter cubed. So two of the meter cubed here are gonna cancel. This numerator is gonna end up being Newton meters. And what is a Newton meter? A Newton meter is a joule. One Newton times a meter is one joule. But we want kilojoules to cancel with denominator. So we've gotta multiply by one kilojoule over 1,000 joules. And that will enable us to cancel joules with Newton meters, so this all goes away. And now we can cancel kilojoules, and the only thing left is Kelvin, which is in the denominator of the denominator, so that comes all the way up to the numerator, and we're able to get a temperature in absolute terms. So if you crunch all that algebra in your calculator, we'll get 794 Kelvin, and the answer choices are in Kelvin, so we'll just round to the nearest choice. Answer choice D, 800 Kelvin is best.